recording in crap quality though, so <laughs> yeah, next time I'll have to do it in real quality. Are you taking a screen capture? Yeah, well, I'm just capturing the screen with a camera, but yes, same idea, but different oh, cool. mechanism. Yeah, well then I don't have to worry about all these yeah. technical issues. Yeah, the last two weeks I, tr I tried to do a screen capture, but it just wouldn't, I cannot get it to also pick up the sound properly. Um, yeah, it was... it is, it, it's, it's a shame, too, because the files are small that QuickTime makes, but I just, I don't know what's wrong. Yeah, well, mine was saving it okay, but yeah, yeah, that's like I'd have to save it every 20 minutes, and then it's got to render the piece it saved, and then you can't start a new one until it finishes that, and, you know, so it has these bugs in it that just aren't acceptable bugs. Yeah. It's too much for my, I, you know, I mean, my computer's an okay computer, but it's just not good enough for that kind of shit. Just can't do all that multitasking shit. One thing at a time. Right, tastes like shit. Anyway, um, so now we can need we need a new subject. Let's see. How big an asshole is Piro? I say he's a colossal asshole. Colossal. I think he's having like a, a shindig tomorrow or something. Yeah, well he usually does, so that's gonna be his routine. And he'll just talk shit and then he'll, you know, groan on and on forever. And generally be totally uninteresting. It needs to be moderated. You know, Piero needs a moderator. Hmm. Yeah, Piero reminds me of one of those people that like, oh, yeah, well, I just went to the gym and I have uh, a new fitness instructor. And you look at that guy and you're like, yeah, well, maybe the fitness instructor needs a fitness instructor. Yeah. Well, I guess that was somehow relevant. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if it really fit, though. That was the sort of relevancy issue. It may not have fit enough. Not close enough. Wow, well, well, I mean, if you were going to some better, I would look here. Probably. Shit sack. Yeah. I don't know. I think we can do without shit sack. Yeah. Some people should be banned just for having shitty names. Shit sack. Shit head. Shit fuck. Shit shit. Why man? Yeah. Sad sack. Yeah, we can get rid of him too. Let's see. How many other people? Let's kick people out of the room for fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking it. Let's see, I want to get rid of that trolling guy. He's no good. Yeah, fuck you, trolly guy. Fuck you. And such. There, okay, that's good enough. Three. Uh, I feel better now. All right, so let's uh, pose yeah, a question. Yeah, so anyway, Gary, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 we're gonna do this now. Yeah, 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 that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna troll you. Uh, okay. 
We had one of the five worst storms in Chicago history this last week. That was fun. Yeah, well, we had, uh, you know, it wasn't the worst, but it was enough, and it didn't go away, and that's the problem. We had all this damn snow, and it hasn't gone away. Same here. And if it rains on it, you know, rain and snow equals heavy slush, which is bad. But I refuse to worry about it because you know it's not that I just I'm sick of worrying. Um, just take it as it comes. So anyway, I guess I'll have to pose a question of some sort. So life, uh, is it uh, a bug planet? Or is it connected? Yeah. Bug plant or connected? Or something in between. Connected bugs. Well, I mean, my, my, my opinion is that it's all gravitons. Well, that was not one of the choices, but okay. I'll accept that. Correct answer. Rather than... Rather than connect it, I would suggest reflect it. Uh, as, as in the Buddhist doctrine of the web of diamonds, every locus, every point, reflects every other point. And it's in that reflection that there is a connection. Yeah, but reflections, uh, reflections are an illusion because they're not really reflections. Yeah. They're, they're regurgitations. Well, no, they're illusions. Well, I'm just saying they're regurgitations. I mean, something has to absorb and then readmit. So it, it's automatically a corruption of the. There's no true reflection. There's just a, a reprojection. And you know, so it's just based on the quality of the reprojections. You could argue. But I think when we look in the mirror, we see ourselves. I mean, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I would guess I would argue that the reflections are um, close enough. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of creepy, like, when you, like, actually look into the mirror yourself, it's creepy. It depends on the mood you're in. I mean, if you're in the mood for love, uh, it could work out okay. <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, if you're in the, let's be serious, what am I? And then you start looking at the funky, weird hairs growing out of, like, you know, cowpox. <laughs> Could you know, give you all kinds of stories about that? The funky, weird hairs. He actually split a hair in his video, right? I think it was a trick. I think, he, I think it was a trick. Okay, it was one hell of a trick. He split a fucking hair. I mean, fuck. I mean, with his fingers. He split a hair with his fingers. He pulled it out of his face first, too. Yeah, well, that part's easy. But, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> splitting one with your fingers, that's, that's, a, that's a talent. Just don't condition your beard. I mean, split ends are notorious. Yeah, I mean, I, I should know, right? I should know split ends. I'm just still saying. It's still, you know, I can't really find a hair where I could actually find two ends I could actually pull apart, though. You know, I mean, that's tricky. I have to somehow split the end for more more gracefully to be able to peel the two pieces apart. <laughs> you know. But, yeah, you know, who knows? Beard hair is a little thicker. Um, but anyway, so I'm just, you know, I'm saying it's when you, when you really look at what we are, we're just so obviously bugs, right? I mean, you know, our private parts are rather disgusting. The whole mechanism inside is pretty grotesque. You know, all this food goes in, it gets turned into this mush, and then we shit it, and it's just all very disgusting. Um, and yet people are just totally, like, they ignore all that. And it's like, no, I think it's pretty significant. I mean, we're just this mechanical machine. We're just doing mechanical machine things most of the time. 
my whole body is mechanically machining and it's just this little brain thing is sitting on the top pretending it's having a grand adventure and it's not really doing much except the machine shit right I mean we're just lawn mowers glorified So why would you think the brain isn't mechanical there, Newton? <laughs> it has no moving parts. Well, it has electricity. Computers don't necessarily have moving parts either. If you take the fans off, there's no moving parts. Well, the solid-state hard drives nowadays, buddy, you're behind the times. Oh, I'm just saying, the blueprint is pretty mundane right eek 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 I mean we're just that's, all, that's it we're just eking our way through this pile of shit we're just pack ratting we're not doing anything magnificent or great we're just collecting shit and <clears throat> chewing on some of it and then dropping dead if I choose to see myself as a small ant floating on a leaf down the river, looking at the bridge ahead and yelling, open the bridge, here I come. Well, yeah, I have all kinds of Jedi stories I make up too, but you know, that's just bullshit. That's not philosophy. You know, that's just stuff for wanking to. Uh, I don't know if I'd wank to the ant story though. It's really not a good wanking story. But maybe you throw a girl ant in there somewhere. Little people with big wankers, big dreams, why not? Well, I'm just saying it's not really philosophical. It's just entertainment. Okay, it's like entertaining your psychology. I'm just saying that if you were, if you're just going to get serious and say, what are, what are I? You know, what am I doing? I'm just saying when I calculate it all out, I'm not doing anything different than the fucking rat. I'm just eking, just squeaking through this existence, trying to collect some stuff, trying to feel a little bit comfortable, make a little nest to sleep in, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's just, it's just mundane service of this body. The body sort of owns me, you know, and I just live to serve the body. And um, that sucks. It's all very pragmatic, and I agree. But I have to interface myself as a musician with the world. And I learned a long time ago, if you don't toot your own horn really loud, nobody else will toot it. Uh, yeah, well, cowpox sort of agrees. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you, you, you know, you... Well, they won't toot your horn, but they'll sure toot your coke. Mm. Yeah, but I'm looking for those Catholic girls who will toot your you-know-what. <laughs> well, that's dangerous conversation. Uh, you know, since you say Catholic... <laughs> that's what musicians want. That's what musicians want. Well, I'm just, saying, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just... I'm just saying. You can't be talking well, about... you just got to learn to swing that burger stock. <laughs> you give two old men some rope and they'll just every time they'll hang themselves with it, right? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know. Oh, jeez. Um, uh, you know, throw bricks as necessary. Um, but anyway, um, what was my point? Oh, yeah, that it's all for nothing. But that's, see, it's exactly right, right? So all your age and wisdom has gotten you guys nowhere. <laughs> right, because you're still fantasizing. 
You're still making shit up. No, not, not, <laughs> not exactly true. I do demand a higher price for my art, and I get it. Uh, well, I'm not saying that's not good. I'm just saying that it works both ways, right? You just price yourself out of the market just as easy. So if you would have failed, then your lesson would have been the opposite lesson to learn. Um, but... Uh, um. I, yeah, it's not really about your, like I said, the whole ego thing. I'm not opposed to ego. I'm just saying that the, um, it's just something you notice, like shitting. I'm just saying that your ego is just something you're doing as a process. And it doesn't have anything to do with the truth. It just has to do with some gratification you get out of acknowledging yourself or having your, or being satisfied with yourself. Well, the truth is, is that I'm constructing my own ego exactly the way I construct my symphonies. Yeah, well, I don't buy that argument. Because, you know, the ego is such a bad note. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a bad instrument that I don't think you can make a good note with it. You can just make bullshit. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, that's all I'm just saying is, is this is something you do uh, like eating. You know, feeding your ego is like eating. It's something necessary, but it's not a good thing necessarily. It's just a, a bad habit. Ah, uh, there's the difference. You see, ego is the only animal that can feed itself and still live. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if there's not a price for that consumption. Um, but I don't have a quip. I don't have some quick counter argument to say, no, there's some other, you know, you're not necessarily a, a, a menace, but I'm just saying, obviously we know <clears throat> that ego, what egos lead to, right? We can see, like, egos lead to slavery, and they lead to uh, elitism, and they, they lead to a lot of very negative <clears throat> um, um, consequences. That I agree with. If you look at the art world today and what's going for art and what's selling, I agree. People have played that game all too much. But a real artist knows that their ego is just made of confetti and, you know, and just uh, paper mache. And uh, we construct it and make it as pretty as we can and sell it for the highest price. Um, you know, I learned a long time ago, by the way, uh, I used to go out to these fairs all the time and sell little pieces of art. And I made a fair, you know, I made a good living, I have to say. You know, I didn't charge people a lot, but it was enough to make a living. And then one day, one of my friends and teachers came up to me and he said, you know, you don't think of yourself uh, too highly, naturally. You ought to raise the price. I said, well, if I raise the price of my art, it probably won't sell. He said, well, if you keep telling everybody subconsciously that you're not a very good artist, I'm sure it won't sell. So I doubled my price, Gary, and I started selling right away. I made four times the money by doubling my price than I did before. Yeah, I know, but is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, I'm just saying that, I, look, I had a situation where I could sell something for $350, right? Some little piece I made. And all I had to do was sign it, and the person would have bought it. But I wouldn't sign it, right? So they wouldn't buy it unless I signed it. You know, because it was only signed art that counted, right? It's, it's the only kind of investment art that's, uh, that's permitted. So, I mean, it's, it's, so, but it's just saying that, because, yeah, that, what does that have to do with, I mean, my signature isn't part of the art. I'm not going to tattoo the thing. The thing is what it is. It isn't me. It's it. Okay? It's not, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I didn't like the idea that it was being valued because of an individual making it rather than valued just for what it is. You know, I wanted it to be a thing, not anything else touching that. <clears throat> and, and you know, that, but I'm just saying, so, but that's, so I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. I mean, whether or not you make money, I don't know whether it has anything to do with whether or not you're being an artist. No, you're noble and you're humble. But a lot of art is perceived value. It's an intrinsic it's not like um, it's not like you're taking something home and plugging it in and playing with it. It's not a utilitarian thing. It's not it's not an application. It's something in the mind. 
And oh, yeah, I know, I know, but but that's what I'm sort of as sort being the more valuable artist. Then when they buy the art at a higher price, it has more value to them and to their friends. You're not cheating them. You're not cheating them at all. What you're doing is you're assisting them with understanding that what you do is unique and valuable. Yeah, I know, but I just don't know whether that's what people are seeing, and I don't know whether they're getting it. And, and you know, I just this is just a commentary I have about art. I mean, if if um, uh, uh, Michelangelo had signed the David, you know, in some overt way, like right across his belly button or something, he you know slop chiseled his signature, it would have diminished the statue. It would have just been a distraction. And I really find it obnoxious when painters paint and then they slop this signature on it like this is now part of the painting. And it, to me, it's obnoxious. It's, a, it's an insult to their painting <laughs> that they've graffitied on it. And it's like, well, this graffiti is just a distraction. It's another piece of art, maybe, your signature, but it doesn't belong on this art. It's just like putting a... It's, it's like it's tearing it. It's... it's, it's, it's marring it it's messing you know what i'm saying it's like shitting on it it's like blowing your nose on it it's you know it's what what is this signature have to do with the painting and so uh, i just find that obnoxious that they don't even think to sign it on the back or do it somewhere else but this idea of signing the piece and and so aggressively you know where you're just to me it's very distracting but wasn't that a thing with galleries for a long time where they wouldn't accept painters that hadn't ex that hadn't signed it on the front? I mean, now it's totally normal for people to sign paintings on the back. Well, the problem and, I mean, here... I how, how... The problem is the disconnect now. Now the signature means more than the artwork. I was out... I was in New York with my friend Peter Max, and we went out to dinner one night, and we were eating, and then I said, Peter, I don't have the money to pay for this. It was a very expensive restaurant. He says, I don't either, but don't worry about it. So he called the Mater D over, asked for the manager. The manager came out and he said, what if I draw something on this napkin for you and then sign it? Would you take that instead of the money? And the guy said, in a fucking heartbeat. So I realized a real artist who is well known can create money any moment by simply signing something. I know, but their I'm just saying that that's not, I'm are. just, my, my point is, is that's not a good thing, though, is my point. That's a bad I thing. All right, so that's, I agree that, with that. I'm just telling you that's the way the system has been set up, and a lot of art today is coming out of factories, not being produced at all by the artists, and they just come in and they batch sign stuff, and it sells for enormous amounts of money. I don't like that. I don't agree with that because I take great pride in putting my name on my work. Yeah. And that's it. You know, what I do, I do. And I put, I sign it because it's me. That's it. That's all I want people to know is what I did. I'm, you know, what other people are doing. But unfortunately, the industry has gone so egocentric that now the signature is worth more than the art. The art can be jobbed out in China. Well, again, it doesn't even matter whether oh, it's no, jobbed out. It, it's still the Picasso scenario, in my oh, opinion, no. where, where you know, 10% of his art might have yeah. some sort of value. 90% is shit, but the 90% is appreciated because it has the Picasso, because Picasso shit it. So somehow it's holy shit because it's a Picasso shit. And that's the nonsense part. I mean, I think the art has to has to earn it, okay? I mean, maybe, maybe Michelangelo actually made a bad piece of art. I've never seen a bad Michelangelo, but maybe there is one, all right? But the fact, you know, and the, the fact that he did something shouldn't mean... Oh, yeah, the unfinished ones. Yeah, he has a lot of... <laughs> just there's just, just, just an arm sticking out of a rock. You know, he has a few of those, just no. arms. You know. no. His last Pieta was really bad, but he was old as Fuck when he was doing that. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's, inter it's interesting. Uh, the, the drawing, sign drawing on the back of a check was Picasso's trick for never paying for a meal because the drawing was worth more than a meal. But it's interesting that you mentioned Michelangelo because his early PHA was consistently confused as the work of another artist. So he went back into it and signed it right across the front. If you look at the sash of Mary, 
it says this was made by Michelangelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, well, I'm the just one saying that's that. now behind glass that got its face smashed, right? Yeah. Yeah, Mary lost her nose. Right. Yeah, I, you know. Who's the bad God? Well, I'm just saying that we, I think we're all, I'm grateful that most of the time sculptures aren't signed. You know, I'm just saying that I'm sort of grateful that they're not, you know, because I think it would detract from them. And I just, that's my only point in bringing it up. I'm not saying it's wrong for somebody to be acknowledged for their work. I'm just saying it always annoyed me that the acknowledgement is sometimes bigger, you know, it's, it's too big. It defaces the work. Well, well you know, every, every Rodin is signed, but it's somewhat a little more complicated than that because no one work, well, save the man with the broken nose, was a work of Rodin alone. It was an entire atelier, uh, a, a, a whole crew casting this now. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's a whole other subject. You know, that, that, that's... That, that's a whole other subject, the idea that you can manufacture, you know, things of beauty. And so obviously, you know, there's probably a lot of that kind of work where, you know, more than one artist, you know, is responsible for the creation. Um, a lot. You know. Um, Increasingly. More. Yeah, well, now especially. Because um, now it's all just a style thing. But I was just thinking about Van Gogh, you know, the, the weird thing about his signature, it was too big, in my opinion, all that stuff, but it was always kind of consistent, and it was in the same, it was in the same feel as the paintings, you know, it was just as much as an abstraction of a signature, if you know what I mean, I mean, his signature was almost as abstract as his paintings were, and so that was sort of interesting, because it sort of blended into the painting more, because it was such a you know, such a broken typeface. You know, you know what I mean? Such an un, unfinished typeface. And the paintings always had that kind of unfinishedness to them. You know, so it was kind of a, a good compliment. Uh, it's, I, it's, it's even further complicated with the Eastern view of art. There you do have the stamp prominently displayed of, of the artist who, who made it. But, but you also have the stamps of those who have seen it and admired it. And their stamp is, is, is uh, documented upon the work. So not only do you see the work, the, the stamp of the artist, but the stamp of all those who claim to have enjoyed it. Yeah, well, I imagine that would get kind of <laughs> kind of messy. I don't know where they're stamping, but uh, yeah. it might be an yeah, interesting... I mean, in a way, it's not, that, it's not that far from video sharing now in a weird way. I mean, you can leave your mark on any piece of art. I mean, I know it's the difference between painting and print and uh, video, Yeah, well, but, that might I mean, mean something if people... The idea of signing something today is pretty... You know, I, I that's mean... That's a good I, idea. I, we have old fan. That's a good idea. You ought to... Um, do a work of art, put it on a wall, have people come in and have them sign on top of it until it's completely gone and you can't see their artwork at all. That would be interesting. Hey, guys. Yeah. yeah. I bet you somebody's done that. I mean, you know, there's certainly a whole movement of obscured imagery, you know, now. Well, I was thinking of it kind of, kind of like, um, you know, in the Mr. context. Mitchell, that is a great beard. Oh, yeah, well, I'm not talking about his beard right now, so... You're not a great contributor to this room, so we'll see you later there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just kind of a shame in the in in the in the idea of si of signage and you know and, and 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 the autograph being so important. I mean, I wish I could do that in this medium, you know, or video sharing medium. I mean, one of the biggest problems is that you can't you can't put too many markers on it, um, you know. So it's I don't know. I mean, I don't have well, my, I, don't I have was my thinking. I was thinking. I was thinking that conceptually that would oh, sort of it sort of oh, makes oh. sense to me if if it was like the old days when everybody had a ring, you know. I mean, all the all the people who were worth anything, you know, had a ring and they left a stamp, you know, and and the idea of just having people who mattered leave a mark, you, you know what I mean? Somebody's opinion, like just having Joe Smo say something, who cares? But if some authority, you know, somebody who's respected, 
you know, leaves his mark on it. You know, that might mean something to have that kind of validation. But yeah, just haphazard people, you know, smearing their poo on it, saying I was here. Yeah, that just doesn't add up to anything, you know, to me. Fucking old ass man, why you banning me, you fat fuck? Oh, yeah, fuck yeah, out of all you yeah, old yeah, men, yeah, jagged yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, 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 you're really interesting. Oh, no, no, you're not. You're not interesting at all. Holy but, shit. You know, this also goes back to the very basics and history of signing itself. Remember, when people made a mark, they were making a mark as a witness. And early artists used to sign their works, especially on the work itself, as a witness. They were witnessing that they did do this art. But what happened is the signature became more important than the goddamn art. The ego became more important than the fact that I'm making a mark to be a witness. And as people began to learn to write and become more fluid with this, writing became more and more elaborate, more and more, until it became its own thing. Yeah, I'm just saying that I... It's like the bronze... Oh, pardon me. It's like the bronze we keep in the garden. Uh, every day... Uh, half of, of, of nature shits or urinates on it, including yours truly. And every morning the dog comes out and sniffs at it to see who's been by. Uh, it's sort of like the object has, has become more than just a simple bronze. It's become a, a community communication post for the birds and dogs and cats. Yeah, well, who cares, <laughs> all right? I mean, you know, they got nothing to communicate. What are they communicating? Yeah, I shit here. So what? I mean, it's a lousy conversation. <laughs> you know, a conversation about who oh, took a dump. Oh, sir, <laughs> sir. D don't denigrate a territorial poop. Uh, yeah. It draws some very nice lines. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying. I don't. Aren't you gonna meet some nice chicks? You know. Yeah, me no speaky that language. Yeah, no shit and piss. Yeah, no, I'm not talking that. <laughs> yeah. Fecal social media. Yeah, no, no thanks. Not interested. It's like you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you don't even want to know who's used the outhouse, right? I mean, like, say, you, you remember the outhouses at rest stops, right? Those horrid, awful things. I mean, you wouldn't want to see the people that went there today, you know? You're just like, oh, man, that guy's got herpes for sure. I mean, you're just like, yeah, what? I'm going to use this thing? No, 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 no. I like how they added corn for texture. Yeah, <clears throat> well... Whatever. So enough poo talk. Well, let's move to something else. Uh, but art always goes to poo, doesn't it? Yes, it always leads to poo. Art is poo. Yes. Art I is poo. <laughs> art for the artist is not so different from the act of excretion. Yes, exactly. Mindless, mindless excretion. If it doesn't come out, <laughs> die. My, mindless, mindless. Let's add the mindless part. That they know. No intelligence required. <laughs> you know, even babies can do it. Three out of four artists say old poop. Yeah. <laughs> well, three out of four artists are oh, incomprehensible, oh, oh. and that's part of the problem. Um, but for constipation, wheat bran does wonders. I have to give that a try. I use codeine. <laughs> that sounds like a lot more fun. That'll definitely get the creative shits going. I think you have to store it for value. You get every bit of energy it has. So you can hold on to it as long as possible. Well, don't laugh. We're aging urine down here. Well, I don't even want to. I don't, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, use it to paint the walls. It makes the dog happy. Um, you, do, you, do, you do have quite the collection there, Erwin. Kopak speaks quite literally. I should probably take up that habit, just as I could use it as deer repellent, probably. I mean, aged urine is probably even, even the deer will yeah. say, fuck you. I ain't coming back here. <laughs> it's, it's aged rabbits urine. are no longer an issue. We gotta get you guys super soakers. You're gonna 
go that route. I have already bought Especially myself a, a, a water rocket for the purpose. Yeah, so I can spray it all over the whole town. I'll shoot my little rocket up and spray it. Uh, You can also stack up the containers during the winter and use them as a thermal mass for insulation. Yeah, well, yeah, no, no, thank you. <laughs> Wait till the next earthquake, right? Ugh, boy, you're going to be buried under it. But yeah, art is a interesting. That's a, that's a perfect, oh, I was about to say that's a perfect example of of, of a very uh, marvelous and profound change. Uh, ever since we started synthesizing uh, urea from the decomposition, the destruction of natural gas of methane, uh, urine no longer has its importance. Uh, it used to be the primary, that vegetative matter used to be the primary source of nitrogen in agriculture. Well. As, as well as industry. I don't know about the primary source, I don't know, but I guess it's at least it does cycle, it moves it through the environment, so I guess that's sort of a source thing, but it's just migrating it. Um. I've been using uh, feather. I've been using chicken feathers in my garden because they're almost pure nitrogen, and they take a long time to break down. I mean, they take about five, six years. If if you could hyd hydrolyze it with a strong acid, you would have have much quicker results. Well, I suppose you could also bake them. <laughs> you know, you could cook them. You know, and cut the time in half. Yeah. Yes. Well. well it's 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 in your your bagel. Hydrolysis of, of feathers is it is the commercial source. That in human hair is the commercial source of lysine, a a dough conditioner, an additive. What's lysine? It's a dough conditioner. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a dough conditioner. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That is. Um, uh, it makes uh, it things uh, rubber. Not, not uh, uh, Libro Rotary uh, L, L cysteine. Pardon me. Libro Rotary cysteine, an amino acid. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a dark condition. Yeah, it's glue essentially. Um, glue, glue, okay. bagel glue. Um, uh, but anyway, um, what was I going to say? There was some relevant point I had to make. Oh, yeah, well, you were talking about Eastern art before. And like in Indian stuff, right, they do a lot of art is just porn, right? I mean, that's sort of the impression I have is that it's all porn. Um, but it's just kind of funny that, you know, what's the beauties in the eye of the beholder kind of thing, you know, and what gets converted into art or what's called art it has to mean something to people, you know. And, you know, that usually has to do with some very subjective sense of aesthetics and you know that's just so cultural and so um you know time-based you know because obviously like the art of the middle ages is kind of not terribly attractive from my point of view you know it's women are a little heavier than they need to be and you know they're not doing anything too terribly interesting and so it's yeah you just say okay it's okay but it's not exactly erotic But then you can argue that some perfect photograph of some, you know, perfect woman or something could be some beautiful image. And, you know, it's not really, it's not painted, it's not art in the sense it didn't take any hard skills to create. Um, but it does the same thing. It's feeding the same need. So, I mean, art has gotten so... Well, art, so, it's, so, so, yeah, it always comes down to this conversation about, are you talking about people who actually have skill at converting mental impressions into physical objects or are you talking about what means something to people you know is that sort of where art's gotten it's like a celebrity art now it's 
you know, you don't know whether the celebrity means anything. I mean, are the actors who are getting $10 million a year really great actors? Or are they just pretty enough? And, you know, because film has gotten cheap, it doesn't matter that they can't remember lines and all that kind of crap because they can fix all that shit. You know, I mean, they take 9,000 takes, so you really don't have to be a very good actor anymore, right? I mean, with 9,000 takes, you know, you can't fail, right? Because even when you're failing, you're probably succeeding in accomplishing the task. Yeah, the film crew just came by to we film me the and they took a hundred hours of video, Gary, and they're only going to use about a minute and 30 seconds. But isn't that the value of that, right? <clears throat> because obviously in the past, you had to be right on the first time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, back in the Cecil D. DeMille days, you couldn't afford film. It was really expensive. So people had to get it right in the first take or it was really expensive. You know, you can't do it twice. And so there was sort of a higher premium for somebody called an actor because they really had to do, they really had to do it. You know, they had to get it right. And you just don't have to get it right anymore. That was the problem with um, uh, uh, Ian Rand's uh, movie, you know, when they were doing that, uh, what was it, Atlas Shrugged or the other one, um, um, they did the movie, there was this long, long-winded speech at the end that Gregory Peck has to say, and he had to memorize the whole damn thing, because they couldn't afford to take it in different takes, because it was too expensive with the film and the setup. Yeah, so I'm just saying there was actor meant something different than it means now and you could say artist means something different now than it meant you know 500 years ago an artist was somebody who was really skilled at converting you know create you know doing the physical process of of making an image or an impression <clears throat> you know where now artist now is more about the the concept you know that they're artists of concept not necessarily skill at rendering their skill is in conceiving. You know what I mean? Conceiving is the, the higher premium now. You know, conceiving of the image has more value than rendering the image. Just, you know, the way I see well, it. Well, that's definitely well, true we, the we, academic we, art world. I mean, at least right now anyway. I mean, yeah, everything is pretty much driven by the statement, you know, more than the look of the piece or what it takes to make. Not that, that not to say that some people aren't making some absolutely beautiful stuff that's also very high concept. Um, but yeah, you do, I mean, you don't know, I mean, very few people go to art school anymore to learn a skill of any particular kind or to refine, I mean, really, I mean, a lot of people end up going to art. There are art schools that specialize, you know, in, in like, you know, the, the fine arts as they, you know, are more traditional. Well, well, you, well you can almost arts. argue that... I mean, a the... lot of people who end up going to art school are terribly disappointed because they're not, they're not made to do any of that. I mean, you could almost argue that there was like this apex point, person. you know, that would be like the, the, the Michelangelo-style error where the premium was creating the realistic three-dimensional graphic or, you know, the sculpture. So it was an idea of doing the perfect rendering, you know, of a reality. And then once they acquired that perfect skill, you know, the skill at doing the, you know, Sistine Chapel and shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, making a perfect image. Or the David, you know, making the perfect sculpture. Then the idea was to <clears throat> go that step further beyond perfection by making it an abstraction. You know, by giving it some quality. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Right in the middle of one of my speechifies. Now I'm going to have to sign in again. So it doesn't give me... I don't have any of my magic powers. That will not do. I don't want to load the trap room, you cunt. Uh, you mean you bastard? I want to sign in. You fucker. Uh, it still doesn't remember my name. Damn it. No, come on. Oh, come on. I was supposed to remember the public pay. I remembered it. And, uh, yeah, look, yay. <laughs> Gods. <laughs> Gods. Uh, T. 
teens. What else do we have here? Weird, frumpy, queer, fucked up, strange. That's a weird place I am on. Do 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 do. Loading and such. Which most everybody would understand. Say, uh, uh, uh Bosch's triptych of, of heaven and hell, the, the, the garden of earthly delights. You look at that and you know exactly what's going on, or at least you did, even if you were an illiterate peasant in those. It's, it's full, full of visual references to the script these days. But as the artist became more and more liberated, and more and more the individual, rather than the worker of art, uh, especially under a patron, as the, as the artist became more liberated and individuated, so did the message. So now what we're, the present situation is, we're a bunch of individuals running around with such an individual message that only the artist understands what he's talking about. Yeah, well, I guess uh, I think if you get it right, it's, you know, there's a lot of art that's just a bunch of mm, psychological masturbation or whatever you want to call it, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, putting balloons around Central Park or, I mean, there was somebody who did that to Central Park. They put a bunch of sheets on clotheslines, you know, and, and called this art. And it was just, you know, it was just a pile of shit. <laughs> well, the thing about Christo is that he is a phenomenal draftsman. I mean, he's one of these guys that can totally do the the camera thing. He's a brilliant oh, artist. Yeah, 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 he also yeah, yeah. does very whatever, which I don't like either, to be honest with you. Well, well I just, I, I just mean that he's a mover shaker. He gets stuff yeah, done. Yeah. He can he can talk really rich people into giving them a lot of money for this stuff. I mean, yes. don't forget, he draped here in California and San Francisco. He draped us in a big, long, what? five mile long piece of cloth here and uh, actually yeah. got people to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, well, I'm just saying that the uh, th that's my argument is is that you know the, the, the art reached its peak in terms of rendering and then it became a competition to add value so we went beyond the perfecting of the rendering of a copy of reality you know or a du you know a great you know doing a, the, the perfect still life or the perfect you know landscape and then it became this competition to now make the sky purple and now give it, you know, flavor of emotions. And so then you'd go to like the Van Gogh era where now you had all these different ways of painting, you know, cubism and all that stuff was all happening then. You know, all, all these revolutions in art where now art was becoming more about some perversion of reality that was that just preyed upon emotions themselves, like, you know, rich colors, dramatic colors, uh, bold colors, you know, that kind of exaggerations of reality. And that became the new art, was finding a way to exaggerate it without losing its beauty or its continuity or all this other kind of stuff. And so, yeah, art, that's where it became this creative thing versus this rendering thing. So art started as all the artists were good renderers, you know, the first artists, Right? I mean, the whole way you got called an artist was to be a good renderer. If you sucked at rendering, you weren't an artist. You know what I mean? You sucked. You know, if it didn't look like a water buffalo you were painting on a wall, nobody would say, paint another water buffalo, because they'd say, that looks like a piece of shit. You know, so I mean, it was all about the skill of rendering, and then it became the skill of conception. And that's all I was trying to get to, is that now it's all about this, this, it's so abstract and so obtuse that the message is almost indecipherable. You don't even know what the artist mm -hmm. is thinking. That's exactly the point Erwin was making uh, while you were gone, Gary. He was saying that before, when the artist was creating their art, they had they were confined to the tools. You were confined to the materials and the things you used. But as time has gone on and as technology technology has grown, the artist is now freed from the bonds of the tool. And more artists work in multiple media now than ever before. And as time goes on, you see more and more and more freedom away from the machine and being confined. And what happened is art has moved towards the idea, the conception, 
the story or the ego of the artist. Those now become the thing rather than the product anymore that's being produced. Yeah, I don't know, you know, I think there's both of those working here. You know, I'd say more for, yeah. I'd say the ego stuff is more of a problem for what sells and what doesn't sell. But I'd say that there's so many, there's a whole class of artists who maybe aren't very creative, but Photoshop gives them a set of tools where, like acting, they can do it wrong so many ways, but they're going to hit it right now. And that, you know what I mean? They don't need too many right answers to be able to be functional at it. So, I mean, it's, but it is just there's so many tools. Like you could spend a lifetime as an artist just photoshopping the world, right? I mean, you could just photoshop everything and find some new variation of it, new version of it, new, you know, just the position of things, you know, that's going to make. Uh, it's like this graphic art that I used for the background of the video I'm going to give you for Vlogger Dome. You know, I just did the Google image search, you know, and just had it running in the background. But you see lots of interesting images. You know, some guy had painted a turtle. You know, and it was painted with the with a dollar bill superimposed on it, right? And it, but it was just a beautiful way of of blanketing a turtle. You know, the shape of a turtle with this really three really well painted image of a dollar bill on it. You know, but it's that kind of thing that Photoshop gives you the ability to do. You know, with ease, and so you can you know do these really. Um, you know, you can combine so much. You know, I'm just saying it's a whole different level of, it doesn't take the same kind of creativity, it's a different kind of creativity. Oh, it's John Hartfield's Wet Dream. Photoshop. No more cut and paste. Jesus, that was clumsy. Yeah, yeah well, the so tools... Don't even yeah. take photographs of themselves anymore without putting it through Photoshop before they post it. Yeah, it's just an amazing, like I said, I wish I could just spend a few lifetimes just playing with Photoshop, just because you can do so much with images, you know, it's just an amazing, um, just to play with the filters, you know, and just... But this brings up the question, what is an artist for, if anything? Are we to produce the beautiful object? Are we to produce the cultural statement? Are we to get a blowjob? I, I, you know... Well, that's that's where I'm. This that's that's sort of my to... argument here is that I'm saying that art is an indulgence, okay, of our psychology, and that I would argue that it doesn't really have any place <clears throat> if we're going to be serious-minded because it's not explicit enough. It's not a direct enough way to communicate, and it's it's another sloppy human invention for communication. But as porn, <laughs> okay, I'm all for it. Art, porn, I mean, if it, if it gets you off, so to speak, if it speaks to you, well then, yeah, that's, the, that's art. But I mean, um, I just don't know if art has any credibility as a, as a message anymore. I take a much wider stance. Uh, the word art itself comes from the word artifice or artificial or architecture, which means it is uniquely a creation of mankind. It's not divine intervention. It's not bubbling up out of nature, you know. It's not um, uh, aliens coming down and drawing. It's not given by anything fantasical or imaginative beyond the fact that it is something that a human being creates. It's artificial. And in that sense, for me, that's holy. Every person's individuality being expressed through their art is a holy message for me. That's yeah, the way I see yeah, it. See, I, I just, spirituality, I, 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 it's appreciating each other for who we are and expressing that to each other. Yeah, I just don't have any of that in me at all. I, I don't have any of that um, presumption that everybody we, has. We know that. That everybody has a masterpiece in them or something because they don't. What they create is shit or bigotry or obnoxiousness or insensible silliness or you know, some other stupidity, and it's, there's nothing to glorify about expressions. We, we but, but, the, 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 but that's the real we were, thing. We is, were given a simple definition. Uh, art being any contrivance or device wrought by craft or skill, uh, that does make the bird an artist. They weave their nest. That makes 
spiders. I know, but artists. but but there's a formula. Their it's a formula that doesn't even it doesn't even measure up to my psychological um, um, repudiation of art. I mean, at least our psychologies are complex enough that we demand something more than formula art, right? Now, a bird is just formula art. Sometimes artists like me, I would almost argue that some part of my art was very formula in that you learn tricks, you know, contrast, you learn about shape distortions, you learn about the hidden, the disappearing edges, you learn about different techniques for rendering. And so you just become somebody who follows the formula, the recipe. You know, I become a cook because I can follow the recipe in the book. And there's a certain amount of art that sometimes is just following the recipe. You're not really creating. Again, you're trying to recreate something, you know, so you're not even, it's not like you're creating, like if you try to paint a, a tiger, it's not like you're creating tiger. You're creating an impression of tiger to match your own skill level even, right? I mean, sometimes I'll stop a painting. Like I stop paintings when I'm halfway done because I say, shit, this might be as good as this gets. I mean, it's a cool image the way it is now. If I fuck with it, trying to make it right, I might make it wrong, you know, because it's, it's, it's wrong just the right way now. And if I try to fix it, I'm going to break it. And that's a weird place to be in. It's when you look at a painting and you say, I just don't know if I can make this better. All right, well, how do you answer the elephant who paints the same self portrait well, it, it, that's formula all over the place, right? Because they, that's, it's, that they've taught the elephant the step-by-step -step guide. So the elephant learned stroke by stroke by stroke by stroke by stroke. The elephant isn't painting a self-portrait. The elephant's only learned how to count to 25. And it knows it has to do 25 strokes, and then it gets rewarded and has its belly rubbed. Yeah, that's fine. It's art. I mean, I, I just think art is one ever expanding giant bucket of slop. And, you know, I mean, a lot of it's edible, a lot of it isn't. Um, I mean, I think, I think what's happened is just, yeah, I mean, I think it's the basis of what you're saying. I mean, the idea of the, this artist is a certain kind of creator has died. And I, I, that's fine with me, quite frankly. I think, the, I mean, I think the best thing about art is that it can, it can be anything and it can, anybody can do it. Well, I know, I know, but it's like, it's like being a plumber. You know, being as a plumber's changed. I mean, you could almost say blacksmith was the original plumber or some kind of weird thing like that. I'm just saying, but obviously they had a definition. You know what I mean? So it's like teamsters have changed, right? I mean, they're not driving horses anymore. You know, they're driving trucks and boats and docks. And, you know, so their job description has changed substantially. So obviously artist has changed. And I just, but I just mean that I just, some, some of the change is into a realm that is just so ambiguous that I don't know if you can acknowledge it as being a skill. I mean, it's a kind of... It's a skill, it's a skill. I mean, if, I, if I'm thinking of the kind of work you're thinking of, it's, I think it, the skill to it, which, yeah, is kind of an ambiguous term, I, I agree. Um, it, it's just, it, it, it's playing a kind of academic system. I mean, there's a, there's a kind of, there's all these conversations about objects under some sort of context and I mean and so people play into all of these various ongoing aesthetic conversations and it's not a, a lot of it's not particularly absorbable by and I hope it's not particularly interesting well, well, I, I, you know. in a wide range of people so I, I agree with that um, well, look, Picasso. I, 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 Picasso was a, a competent painter, right? So you know, he he could paint landscapes. He could paint paintings. You know, that were actually paintings. You know, what I mean, he wasn't. He didn't start off as an abstract artist. But I mean, if I do like a Salvador Dali, Picasso comparison, and just say, what is Picasso really doing? I mean, at best, at at your best glorification of pa Picasso. Um, you can say that he's like Warhol or something, that he's playing the market. You, you know, he's giving people what they want. Or he's doing some, you know, symbolic representations of things that mean something to people. So he's, you know, it's logoism, you know, or, or iconism, you, you know, kind of. But it's just so distant from 
something like, you know, how long would it take Salvador Dali to create one of his pieces? You know what I'm saying? Because the amount of work that had to go into mastering the creation of the images in the proper proportion and, the, you know, the three-dimensionality and, you know, I'm just saying, I mean, the detail alone is just, there's no comparison between a Picasso and a Dali. Yeah, but I mean, I think I think the way that individual practices have changed to become so different too. Like, yeah, I can do the really intricate sculpture stuff, but I also can do the real slap it together stuff too. And I mean, so I think people are operating with, on both levels a lot of times uh, as well now, and that's kind of changed. That, well, well, well um, I'm just saying that I guess I'm not going to call somebody a plumber, you know, if they're gluing plastic pipe together. You know, there's a certain line you have to draw where you say it's not plumbing anymore, it's something else. You know, I mean, if, if you know, if it's not... Um... This is, I mean, this just gets into, like, we're fighting Pokemon to me, you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, we all have... I mean, we're doing that with aesthetics, essentially. And I mean, I, I get what you're saying, I really do. I mean, there are some people who are just... Uh, well, as long as it's all, it's all, as long as it's all going to be thrown into the same bucket, I guess I'm almost going to say I don't want to be called an artist, just because I don't want to be in the same bucket as the thing being right. called artist. Okay, it's a club I don't want to belong to, because it's a club and of, that, of propaganda I think that is the and bullshit. The artist is that we're all we're all living in the bucket. You know, I mean, Taiwanese noise music has got its foot in Jasper John's face and. Michelangelo's got his dick in, in, I don't know, some dancer's mouth. I mean, it's, it's all mixed together and it's all, it's all consumed and regurgitated, um, back well, out. Well, Rob Show said, I've just, never really, it has lost its meaning and value. A member. Well, exactly what I'm saying is that, yeah, it's, it's a tricky club to want to belong to in terms of what I'm going to feel you know, if I was to say what I want to be or aspire to be, it's just like I say, yeah, it's like I don't want to be a cop as long as cops are crooked, you know, uh, maniacal monsters. Does this mean that Mr. Gary will never be a, a writer of light verse? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What what he will be is yeah I don't know he's probably already been everything he's gonna be to tell you the truth, uh, but uh, he's gonna do limerick. Yeah, that'll never happen. I'll guarantee you that will never happen. Yodeling. Well, if Pyro has his way, you'll be doing a physics limerick. Yeah, well, Pyro is full of shit, so that's not gonna happen. There's no poetry in me. No poetry. Not not intentional poetry. Probably the most poetic thing about you, Gary. You know, that's that's the beauty of life. Of what? Sorry? Oh, I, I, I was about to say that uh, that's why we, we enjoy being a writer of like verse, so little is expected of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have pretty high standards. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, sometimes I go, I, I rate, I rate your work. Sometimes I say, well, he just nailed that fucker. And the other one I say, what drugs is he on? Because yeah, that didn't make any sense at all. But I, I, you know, your your shitting in the in the pile of maggots is a masterpiece. I mean, as a piece of performance art, all right. It just, it, oh, you know, and again, the amazing. splitting of the hair video. It's just, it's just brilliant. You know, brilliant. Too kind, too kind. But I, who are we kidding? We're all artists here. We know that hunger is a perpetual issue, and you know what. I, my belly is not that different from the poor little beetle larvae. They're hungry too. The thing is, if you don't feed them something, they'll come after you. <sighs> yeah, but it's a different kind of food. I mean, man does not live on bread alone kind of thing. Um, you know, we are fed by perception. 
and you know our psychology is the the hardest thing to kept to keep well fed <laughs> you know is your your <laughs> your will to live uh They were happy larvae. They they successfully pupated. In the spring, I, I expect to, uh, the whole neighborhood to be swarmed with black ground beetles. Yes, the neighborhood will be very grateful, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but it might attract birds. Their mother something. thinks from hands. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> maggots, it's not saying much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it probably doesn't think much. It probably, do the, the mother probably doesn't even know it's the mother, right? I mean, it probably doesn't even know. Oh, that's what happened? <laughs> oh, those things hatch? I just thought I was having some sort of period thing. It's the sound they were making that was like the, the best part of that video. That sound was just amazing. The writhing. Yeah, it was very Poeskian. I liked it. Um, but, um, yeah. So anyway, back to reality. Again, though, it, it, it passes through the... the this is the amazing thing about nutrition in the garden. It passes right through them. It's almost as if it's value added. Uh, it, it's then handed down to the to the to the, the fungus and the bacteria, which in turn adds value, changes it yet again. It then goes directly to the the grapefruit tree. Yeah, well, right. Uh, the meat grinder feeds the meat grinder, feeds the meat grinder, feeds the meat grinder, feeds the meat grinder, feeds the meat... Yes, it's meat grinder all the way down. That's not the good news. I think that's the bad news. Well, it means we, we, we're starting to get a handle on waste. But our, our great joy is after this rather intricate process of shitting and eating and shitting again, we finally have a very lovely piece of fruit to give to the poor. Now, if that isn't showing contempt, I don't know what is. Yeah, well, especially if the poor are just going to turn into a baby. You know, if they're just going to make a maggot out of it. Yeah, then nah, no. Nah. Let them go. Let them eat cake or something or arsenic cake. Hey, Abba. Abba? Oh, he's looking mean. <laughs> he's WWF soon. Soon you'll be in the WWF. Wacky, wonderful failures. Unite. That was a short visit. But even the lowly mag has a talent. Medicine Sans Frontier uses them to, uh, in the field to debride necrosis. Yeah, I know, but that's, and, and, <laughs> that, that utility is a utility of, you know, just our failure, mostly. So, I mean, you know, the fact that we need maggots to, to eat dead flesh is not really a good thing. That we don't have a better... Do a much Job. A better solution than that. I mean, it's really a last resort thing. I mean, you know. You could, so, but um, yeah. I, I mean, obviously, we we kind of disagree on the sensibility of this cycle of life crap. Because to me, it just seems like yeah, that's it's just meat grinder and then meat grinder and then meat grinder. So there's nothing. We do, we do concur. I we do concur with your assertion that a part of the idea is to reduce our footprint and to remediate our mess. And and this is one one way to go about it. Yeah, I think my mission is to to throw a, a spade into the grinder. <laughs> yeah, my mission is to. Grind the whole thing to a halt, you know, find some uh, 
metal it can't chew and uh, break the game. Well, as soon as we fail, as, as soon as we stop existing, so does the universe. Yeah, well, I don't think that's a valid argument, but, you know, you can think so, but I don't think so. I think the universe was here when the Tyrannosauruses were romping and stomping. And it will always, you know, it's doing its own thing. The universe doesn't really care about the maggots, you know, eking out an existence on planet Earth. Now, do you feel that is an unfortunate hangover from uh, Descartes and the Enlightenment, where we adopted Newton's mechanistic model of the universe? Because this mechanism that we speak of so often really has been overthrown by your Einstein. And now I'm understanding that your Einstein is overthrown by the quantum. Each and every time our model has proven inadequate. Well, I don't think it, the, the models are that inadequate in the sense they're just mathematical models for those things, so they're not really real models so they're just models that explain effects but they're not necessarily explanation of causes so the fact that we haven't quite got the it's like evolution right you can kind of understand evolution without knowing or seeing abiogenesis you don't need to see the first piece of chemistry replicate to understand that that's a necessary step to the whole thing happening and i guess i would argue that you can understand physics without mumbo jumbo so the fact that modern physics for the last hundred years is yes yeah, since newton has started playing with dualities and um you know f f overt contradictions that's the a bad choice the science has taken but i don't think it's going to be proven to be more complicated i think it's going to be proven to be more simple it will be a, some quantum it will be some cold um mechanism it's not going to be there's no there's not going to be anything more than just a cause and effect um precipitation of complexity and we're just a precipitation we're just <laughs> we're yeah we're just we're just the the a fart does the, un the mean, universe is farted does this mean that you uh you reject the the absurdist view of the universe do you reject the absurd universe? Well, it's absurd by a standard of rationality. It's not a re reasonable machine. It's an ir irrational machine. It's a machine that has no reasoning capacity. So obviously the mechanism can be absurd, and it's absurd. That's a possibility, and it came out that way because something without a brain is not going to act smart. It's going to act dumb. So the absurdity of the existence is just evidence of the lack of knowledge the thing has it's that crude and that simple it can't do something because sensible we, we may have uh, misunderstood but we, we get the impression that you put much stock in cause and effect and <coughs> uh, while that that certainly works in the Newtonian model and I'm, I'm sure it probably works in Einstein's model but when, when folk tell me that in the quantum universe, things just happen. Well, I'm just saying that that's their definition of the quantum universe. I'm just saying I don't, I don't agree with that theory. I don't think there is any wave-particle duality. I don't think there is any mystical photons. With Photons only have one character. They're polarized. They're either, and they move from point A to point B in a straight line, and they only time they don't do that is when they hit point B. They have to hit a point. They don't do anything without hitting something. Photons are victims of their environment entirely. The environment tells them where to go. Not any kind of mystery force. So, so yeah. It seems to be correctly because of the ever Yeah, well, the expansion. Oh, I was about to say that. The expansion of the universe is that oh. what you're going to bring up? Yes. Now, is it, it that's going to to uh, to doom us 
to uh, an entropic mass. Yeah, and I'm even more certain of that now that I've come up with this gravitation theory because, you know, the Big Bang is is what happens is is like with any kind of explosion there's a compression of the explosion there's a high pressure area and we're in the high pressure area of the universe so there's a lot of this gravity because there's a lot of these gravitons moving about but yeah as the universe expands as the explosion expands the pressure to consolidate matter will weaken and first it'll weaken for the big things like the big stars at the end of the universe have probably already disintegrated uh, because there's no gravity out there so they just fall apart because there's no gravity pushing them together and eventually all the atoms would do exactly the same thing without a gravitational pressure forcing them together they will not stay together their inclination is to be free fish and they won't stay in the school once the pressure is relieved so yeah I, we're the universe is doomed to every photon it will just head in its own direction forever into nowhere no chance for uh, a, a, a further collapse no there's a chance no that, that no no, no there's a chance you know who knows there could be a brick wall out there you know what I mean the whole universe could be a bubble and the explosion is happening inside of a bubble and the whole thing will reflect off the inside wall of the bubble and bounce back to the middle again. So there's a chance. I don't know what the mechanism would be. Obviously, we have to explain what the mechanism is, but I'm certainly there's a chance. I'm just saying that it's gravity won't pull it back together. There's no pull force, by my theory. There's only a push force. So once the push is gone, there's nothing to pull it back together. So the question then is, how are you going to shoot the curl? Will you be hanging ten? See, that's a piece of poetry. I just don't. Yeah, sorry. Whoosh, 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 <laughs> whoosh. <laughs> why? Why, why am oh. I shooting crows? <laughs> I don't want to shoot no crows. It's surfing, it's surfing lingo, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, I know the hanging oh. ten part, but I just didn't get the... I don't... Why would I shoot crows when I'm surfing? Oh, to, to shoot the curl is is to surf underneath the cresting wave. Oh, okay. The, the, yeah, 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 yeah. That that's curve. what they call that. They call that something, right? There's a name for that. Oh, I can't remember it. They have a name for that, though. A name I know. <laughs> Versus the crow. <laughs> Shooting the crow doesn't sound like it. Doesn't doesn't really fit. But they have a. Oh. Anyway, um. So where was I? Oh yeah. So yes, the universe is doomed for failure. All for naught. <clears throat> All evidence of our existence will evaporate. <sighs> so, but I mean, everybody, look, the only people want to say that this is a, a mechanism that has some sort of fundament, fundamental character. And again, it all goes back to this replicating molecule. If you believe in evolution, it's just a function of a, a molecule that could replicate and it replicated in this DNA way which is really the molecule changes and it makes a thousand copies and then it you know, only one copy survives and that reproduces and so it's this the, the only thing evolving technically is the DNA molecule we don't evolve we're just the display model that gets the shit kicked out of it and you know if we survive and replicate then you know the molecule goes on to the next generation it's a, a pass or fail and so we're just the demonstration models that are used to prove whether it's a good model or not um, so that, I mean so in that sense it's just a crude piece of chemistry and people are going to get all mystical and say the crude chemistry must always exist in the universe or the crude chemistry is the purpose of the universe and it just, it's just a byproduct 
like methane or like any one of the radioactive elements or something you just say it's just a mechanical possibility it happened but it doesn't have any meaning besides the fact that it was a mechanical possibility but when you think of the odds against it happening routinely you know I mean I could just bring up all the again all the things that happen in evolution one time you know the ear carotid prokaryote thing one time um, neuron <coughs> only one time one first neuron there's no other thinking machine no other thinking machine based on some other kind of mechanism except for neurons now what's the odds of that you know why you know that there'd be no other mechanism for thinking except neurons evolution is that limited you know but it's well, a one I'm, time I'm certain about your term thinking but I, I know Alan Watts has long asserted that there is consciousness elsewhere there, there is even a form of mineral consciousness. Well, he can assert anything he wants. He can, he can assert anything he wants. He can assert there's pink uh, unicorns that fuck uh, purple unicorns. He can say it. It doesn't prove it. It's another matter. So I'm not going to take that too seriously. <coughs> I'm just saying the evidence of this complex. I'm um, saying complex but... behavior doesn't just fall out of the universe. Complex behavior has to be made through this laborious process of having a mechanism to create the complexity complexity just doesn't fall out of nothing it falls out of a process and the process was evolution and evolution has these real narrow constraints against creating complexity that's why there's no other thinking thing which I mean is complexly behaving thing um, in within the animal kingdom if it doesn't have a neuron it's not doing anything complicated I mean, complicated. All right. I have a question for you. Um, what? Yeah, what? You look like yeah, an God. obnoxious troll, but go ahead. What? I look what? Just get to it. Okay. So I take a soccer ball, and I drop the soccer ball on the ground. Um, what happens to my cat? Does he turn purple? Yeah, that's really interesting. Thanks. Only on Tuesdays. <laughs> Fascinating fellow. I think we have uh, identified a possessor of a micro penis. Yay! Must be an amazing atheist fan, no doubt. I would gladly pay him on Tuesday. Ugh, just pathetic. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, this is the kind of thing people get off on. You know, this is this is what the brilliant humans do with their free time. Uh, is troll on the internet. Well, our cats are all purple, but that's because they're so regal. Or uh, that's because you're telling stories about the peyote. <laughs> you're still eating the same peyote over and over again. <laughs> you reprocess the peyote shit. <laughs> it's like bat shit. Yeah, they have coffee they make out of bat shit, you know fungus on the bread it's the fungus on the bread oh, yes. it's, it's, the value the real value that's the real value the purpley bits oh but the mere cat shit is value added anything that can boost coffee from five dollars a pound to 150 is okay in my book well, it is impressive. <laughs> it is impressive. <sighs> yes. Pre-processed I, I, beans. What's the old saying? I'd eat, a, I'd eat the peanuts out of her shit just to see where it comes from. Yeah, well, I never said it. <laughs> so it's, not, it's too old for me. <laughs> the 40s. Yeah, that, that was like the 1920s, I think. Yeah, that was before my time. 1920s, they were saying shit like that. <laughs> yes, I'm never I'm not quite as impressed as the rest of the world. They would do a lot they would they would walk a lot of miles for their camel. I wouldn't walk. So Yeah. <sighs> 
do need it. So what, what is Mr. Gary's uh, typical meal these days? Uh, what, do you, what do you prefer? Yeah, well, I mostly, it's just I have pasta night, potato night, and rice night. So it's just, you know, I just rotate those three things, basically. Um, but French guy just sent me a bunch of, you know, his ground up dried vegetables and such. And so now I can uh, you doing? Uh, add some of that. Yeah, that's fascinating. Upside down guy. That's really cool. Okay, I lost my band powers. Yes. Yeah, well, Chaz is still here, I think. I still have my powers. Yeah, no, I, when I got kicked out, I had to remember to re-sign in. I don't know why it forgets who you are, just because you get kicked out of the room. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. It's weird. What would you say, Owen? Oh, I, I was just wondering if, if anyone was uh, uh, heavy into beans. Yeah, I, I would really, I liked, I really like beans. I like beans. You know, but I can't eat them anymore. I can't digest them for whatever reason. You know, there's some, I've been trying to fix the bacteria in my gut for like two years. And I've been doing all this microbiotic crap and all the rest of this shit. And it's just not working. So I still can't eat beans. But yeah, somebody sent me like two cases of baked beans. And I'm like, yeah, I'd really like to eat that shit, but I can't. Uh, any help from the enzyme and the and the beano? In the hudo the product now. It's 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 it, it's a, a derivative of Aspergillus niger, or black smut. Uh, well, with, don't don't tell me what don't tell me what it is. Don't tell me what it don't tell me what it is. Just tell me. Okay, oh, okay. so so there's an enzyme. Uh, the, What's the name of it? Beano. 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 Okay, I'll look for and that. It, it's an enzyme that, that uh, helps assist in breaking down the polysaccharides that are probably what's giving you the Yeah, trouble. yeah, it's just irritating. You know, I'm a little bit like that on milk. I can't, you know, I'm sort of getting lactose intolerant too, and chocolate too. I can't really eat chocolate anymore either. So I don't know exactly what's going on, but i got to fix it. Well, rather than lactose intolerant, let us say you are lactase non-persistent yeah any adults lose the ability to, to produce the enzyme yeah well i'm broken that's all i know so i gotta fix it yeah all right, all right. well you're you're on the, the the correct path to restoring your gut fauna yeah i mean i went to all this trouble i mean i was eating i was eating horseradish you know vinegar i've been trying all kinds of things to kill everything and then start over but it just hasn't you know well, I was on antibiotics a lot, and the antibiotics screw you up, you know. The, I had the Lyme disease four times, well, five times, yeah. And, uh, you know, each time you're on antibiotics for a month, you know, and that's no good for you. Now, do you keep a garden? Well, I can't. The deers, the deers are voracious here. All right. You just can't win. You have, plant, you have plants growing in your soil, and it's fairly healthy. Yeah, I mean, I can grow some tomatoes and I grow some shit, you know, but it's, I can't really have a, a whole a full scale garden. I can only have a partial garden. All right, then um, I, I make this suggestion because part of our blindness was a loss of fauna because of modern antibiotics and then the B12 deficiency developed. But uh, if you take a little bit of your soil, and eat it. Yeah, no, I, 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 I actually was talking about that. I was actually talking about that earlier, you know, that I could just take a spoonful a day, <laughs> you know. I figure I'd just bake a little bit of soil and uh, that'll do the trick. Oh, don't, don't bake it. Don't I know, I know, it. but I can't trust, um, I, you know. Much. I know, but you don't want, you know, the cats are here and stuff. I, you know, I, you're still pointing me eating oh. big worms and shit. I don't want to that, know. That's part of it. I know, but I don't need no fucking worms. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh -oh. Okay. Oh, wait, the worms can have it after I get rid of it. But they can't have it until I've let go of it. Yeah.
Well, there, there, there are products on the market for soil inoculation mm -hmm. that are sim simply just a proprietary mix of all the microorganisms. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you can still, and I'm just saying the B12 survives, you know, a moderate amount of heat. So I'm just saying you can heat, you know, you can sterilize soil and the B12 will still be in it. So it's still, it's still good for you. Sure. But the, the microorganism that produces B12 won't. Yeah, well, I don't know if you need that in um, you, though. You don't really need to have that microbe inside of you. You just need to eat enough B12. Not, not if, you're able, if, if you're able to...